So from what we just saw that the configuration required for the IPv4 compatible tunnel is pretty much minimal. And this is because in our lab network here, we have a contiguous sets of IPv6 subnet, which makes our static route configuration fairly simple with the single static route. But that, that might always be the case in the actual network. And if you have to deal with discontiguous subnet, there's a chance that you have to configure a lot of static routes and that can quickly become unmanageable if you have to deal with a lot of routers or sites. And that will obviously affect your scalability of your network as well. So it might come to the point where you would like to enable routing protocols across the tunnel to help you with the route advertisement. As you may know, there are a lot of routing protocols relies on multicast to perform neighbor discovery. But that was just not going to work with the setup that we have since the router would not know where to send that multicast packet to across the tunnel without knowing the next top IPs. So what we need to do is to come up or find a routing protocol that relies on a unicast packet. And one of the protocol that comes to mind is BGP where you configure using the neighbor command for the peer. And since the BGP relies on the TCP over the unicast packet, it should work just fine in our setup. And that leads us to our task number two with IPv6 BGP over IPv4 compatible tunnel. So now what we need to do is to remove the static routes on the R1, R2, and R3 routers. And then we need to configure IPv6 BGP on the three routers using AS number 65123 and then advertise the leap back 1, 2, and 3. And then we need to make sure that R2 and R3 only pairs with R1 but not each other. And that's kind of give us a hint that we need to use the feature like a route reflector since by default when you configure IBGP within the same AS, all the router needs to be in full mesh. But since that requirement is not to have R2 and R3 to pair with each other, we're going to have to configure R1 as our route reflector and R2 and R3 as a route reflector client. And then at the end we need to make sure that we verify the reachability among R1 and 2 and 3 leap back interface 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so let's start our configuration on router 1 with removing the IPv6 static routes. So looking for the command IPv6 routes right there. Do a no of those. And then go ahead and jump into the BGP routing process with router BGP. 65123. First, let's go ahead and disable IPv4 unicast in the BGP since we're only dealing with IPv6 here in this lab. And then we'll configure the neighbor. And the IP of the neighbor in this case is going to be the global address of the tunnel one, which if you do show IPv6 interface tunnel one, just like we saw earlier, the global unicast address is automatically put under the format or compatible format, which is colon colon and then the, the source IP of the tunnel. So we need to follow the exact same format. So the neighbor will be colon colon for R2 is 172.16.02 with the remote AS of 65123, which is the same AS since we're doing IBGP. And then the same thing with R3. And then we need to get under the address family IPv6. First, we'll need to advertise our loopback 1, 2, and 3 with the network command. So for loopback 1 is 2011 slash 64, and then 201, and then 02 for loopback 2 and 3. And then for the neighbor, let me just copy and paste. We need to activate the neighbor under the IPv6 address family. And since R1 is going to be a route reflector, we need to configure R2 as a route reflector client. And we'll configure pretty much the same thing for R3 with the activate and specify R3 being a route reflector client also. Okay, so that is the configuration that we need for R1. Next we do R2 first by removing the static routes. Okay, so remove that. And then the command under the BGP routing process is going to be pretty much identical. So let me try to copy this and bring up a notepad. And we'll do a quick change on the configuration. Obviously, we don't need the route reflector client command. So we need to remove that. Here with the router BGP, I believe that's in there by default. R2 is going to appear with router1 only. So that would be neighbor 
Let's say 216.01. Remove that also. Then advertise its own back address. So 2012 on all of them. And then activate the R1 as a neighbor. There you go. Then we'll copy that and then paste it onto R2. All right. Give a couple seconds. The neighbor should come up right there. So adjacency for BGP between R1 and R2 came up already. Repeat the same step for R3 by removing the static routes. Okay, and then we're just going to use the same template right here since R3 also talks to R1, but obviously need to modify the subnet. Copy and paste. We'll give it a couple seconds for the BGP to come up. And then we can do show BGP all summary. And here you can see that R3 has already learned six prefix or six routes from R1 being the neighbor. And if you do show IP BGP all, we should be able to see all the subnets. And you can see here the first three belongs to R1, loopback123. And here these subnets belongs to R2, loopback123. And here are the R3 local loopback IP addresses. Okay, so we'll give it a couple more seconds for those routes to become valid routes. Right there with the greater than sign, that means it's best route, and that should means that the route has been installed in the routing table. If you do show IPv6 route BGP right here, are the six route for R1 and R2. And one thing to notice is the next top IP stays pretty much intact. So the packet will go directly between the two border routers. Okay, now let's run Wireshark packet capture again. And then we can do a ping from R3 to R1. Loopback 1, sourcing from R3 loopback 1. And that is pingable. And we can also try to ping R2 loopback 1, sourcing from its own loopback 1 as well. Okay, and that should show up here, right here in the Wireshark capture with 2133, going towards 2111 with the IPv4 encapsulation of sourcing 1621603, going towards 1621601. Okay, and that's based on pretty much the IP right here from the next top IP address. Okay, same thing, scroll a little bit down. This is for R3 going towards R2. And same thing, the destination IP of the IPv4 header is coming from the next top IP in the BGP tape. Okay, so now going back to R1, if you do show IP BGP all summary, you should be seeing both R2 and R3 being neighbors of R1. And R1 is learning three prefix or routes from each of the router, R2 and R3. And then we have to show IP BGP all. You should be able to see again all of the route sets has been learned from R2 and R3, including its own routes. Okay, just to finish it up, let's do one more sets of pings from R1 to R3. Loopback 1, sourcing from its own loopback 1, sourcing from loopback 2, and then sourcing from loopback 3. Okay, so you can see that everything is working and here we're just using the route reflector to demonstrate that we don't really need to create a full mesh within our IBGP and we can just rely on whether it's a route reflector or configuration to simplify our BGP configuration. Okay, so that completes our task number two. Although the IPv4 compatible tunnel is considered obsolete, since we can accomplish pretty much the same thing and actually more with the ISOTAP tunnel that we will look at in our next video, we just want to include that video right here just to show you the configuration and how it actually works. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up our video on IPv6, IPv4 compatible tunnel. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmins.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.